Well, we are going to talk about finances today and I want to just welcome you to this broadcast. I know that it's going to impact your life. The reason why I want to speak on finances is because there is such a crippling effect in the body of Christ through the type of teaching that there is today. You know, today there's this teaching that is really going against the nature of God when it comes to finances and that causes people not to believe. God wants us to believe and we believe because of His nature, we believe because of who He is. Now we're going to minister a couple of these sessions and um, <clears throat> like I said, as you listen to them, listen to them with a perspective that says it's going to impact me because I know this is going to impact your life. You know, so many times we hear messages on tithing, sowing and reaping and what we must do to get God to do something for us and that just breaks our hearts. It breaks our belief system. It, it twists our mind about who God is and we find it very difficult to trust God. I also saw and I remember when I was really part of the teachings that says by what you do you're going to get God to bless you. While I did that there was something deep in my inner man that said there's something wrong with this. There's something wrong. You know my mind was fully into it. Yes this works and I, it was so much into it that I gave and I blessed and I did all those things on the basis of if I do this, then God's going to bless me. But deep in my heart, I just heard the voice of the Holy Spirit that says, Man, this is not the type of God um, that God is. God is a good God. God is a God of love. God is a God of mercy. He's a God that gives everything for free, including finances. Now, I didn't have the scriptural background um, that time when I had that feeling in me to say, Yes, this is what it is. You know, and continued in that system of death for a couple of of years and many it, it is devastating so I just feel and uh, I've got this thing in my heart that the, the people need to hear the truth concerning finances they need to hear the truth about the character of God when it comes to money you know it is it is not good if people hear a message that says if you give a thousand dollars then God's now gonna bless you if you give a thousand dollars today you're gonna have a 24 hour blessing because there's a 15 minute gap right now and a 2 minute gap right now in a portal in heaven that God has chosen this specific time for the next 300 people that give. You know, that type of teaching is, man I want to put it straight as it is and I don't want to candy coat this thing. That is satanic. It is not of God. It is an absolute wrong way of thinking about God preaching something completely contrary to the character of God, make it impossible for people to believe. We must realize that man has, God, uh, man has been made in the very image of God. And um, the way God made us is to believe and to trust. And what He's done is, is, is given us the ability to believe things that are concrete and good and to run away from whatsoever brings hurt. You can, you can go and check yourself out. Put your hand on a stove plate that is red hot. Try and put your hand there. You will feel that there's something inside you that says, I cannot do this. Although there are people that will do some, some stupid things like that um, for money and for some reason, you know, they will walk over hot coals and they will do funny things because of the needs they have in their life. In the same way we find people, when it comes to finances, they do things concerning finances and the, the give, whole giving thing in churches because of this fear of not having. And fear of not having make them do things that they know with their own normal common sense does not work. And um, I'm referring to uh, teachings that says, if you do something, then God's going to bless you. That type of teaching is not New Testament and when we look at, I, I want to go this far and say it's not even godly. Um, we're going to look at the, the, the whole tithing thing, sowing and reaping thing. We're going to walk through this verse by verse and we're just going to see this love of God uh, uh, spread even in the area of finances. Now I want to start off with a scripture in um, <clears throat> Proverbs. A scripture in Proverbs, then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Hebrews 7 and Deuteronomy. Right, Proverbs chapter, sorry, chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4. Um, if you will, you can go with me in your Bibles. And I think it's a good thing that when you listen to this, 
Um, you can listen to this in, in the archive, in the on-demand part. I'm going to keep this for a while in the on-demand on part because I want people to listen to this. I want you to listen to this because it's, it will bring stability in your faith life. You know, It will bring stability in your relationship with God. It will change the image of God in the subconscious mind of the church as a God that is so worried about money that He could give His Son for free, but He cannot give a cent for free. You know, God gave His Son as a gift. It was very, very expensive gift that He gave. And I imagine that He could give His Son for free, but money you're not going to get out of Him because He's not, you know, not going to do anything for you unless you give 10% to the church. You know, there was nowhere in the Bible even a teaching like that. Not even in the Old Testament. Now, <laughs> we, we're going we're gonna to look at that and how the tithe works. Right, Proverbs chapter 4. Um, let's go to verse 20. It says, My son, attend to my words, incline your ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Now, go with me in your Bible to verse 22, and just see what it says there. It says, For they are life to those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Now what is health and what is life? It is the Word of God. The Word. He says, my son. Now, uh, I mean, the writer of Proverbs wrote this to his son, just speaking about the wisdom that he's got. But interpreting to the New Testament, we know that we are sons of God because of Jesus Christ. And the Word that He speaks towards us is the Word of His grace. The Bible says, and we beheld His glory full of grace and truth. The Word became flesh. John chapter 1. Go and read that. It says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld this glorious Word. This glorious Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. His glory was grace and truth. So, let me put it this way. It says, My son, attend to my words of grace and truth. And I want to just define truth. So many times we think truth is the truth of what you've done wrong. That's not the truth. The truth of something is God's perspective on it. That's the truth. Now, what's the truth about your sin? The Bible says, and this is the truth on sin, that God has not imputed our trespasses against us. So that's the truth. So what's God's truth about our sin? Our, God's truth about sin and us is Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's God's truth. So what's the truth about the sin in the life of a believer? It is, it is all washed away in Jesus Christ. So, I believe that God's truth is a consciousness of Jesus. Everything on this earth pertains, uh, everything on this earth when it comes to God pertains to Jesus and what Jesus Christ has done. What Jesus Christ has done is the very truth of God. So when God, and that Jesus said Himself, is I am the truth. So if, you, if we look at the truth about anything, we look at Jesus. So the Word of God that became flesh was full, full of grace and truth. So uh, uh, truth about, the, this is my definition of truth. Truth is no consciousness of anything else but Jesus Christ. So, my son, listen to my word of grace and have a consciousness of nothing else but the work of Jesus Christ on your behalf. And keep that in the midst of your heart, for this word will give you life and health to all your flesh. And then you keep your heart, which is your belief system, with all diligence, for out of your heart, your belief system, flows the issues or the forces that drives your life. So, what he said is... Place the seed of the word, which is the message of grace, in your heart. Because out of your heart, the way man functions is, out of his belief system, flows the force that drives his life. If you believe something that's good, that the, the, out of your heart, that good will germinate and drive your life into the direction of good, or obviously the word that you then believe. If you believe that... God is a God that's just angry with everybody that does something wrong. That will drive your life. Now, what the, psalm, uh, the, the writer of this proverb said was, listen, take the word, put it in your heart, 
then you guard your heart above all things by not looking at anything else, listening to anything else, not speaking anything else, but that word. Because that word will determine what's going to happen in your life. Now, the reason why I want to lay this as a foundation and um, to this whole series that I'm going to minister is very simple. Many people hear God loves us, God is good to us, God cares for us, but... They struggle, they struggle, struggle to trust God because when it comes to the area of finances, everything but the gospel of grace is preached. So what happens is, people hear Jesus Christ died for our sins on the cross and righteousness is a free gift of God. It's something that God gives to every man. When, when, when we have our crusades, when we preach to the lost, we tell them, listen, I've got good news for you. There's forgiveness of sins. Behold the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. People open their hearts. And with that open heart, another teaching is dumped into it that says, God is not willing to care for you if you don't give 10%. God is not willing to show His love towards you if you're not faithful in your finances. God is not willing to even heal the, the sick people in your family if you don't give right now to some television station or some pastor. Now, that is deception from the pit of hell and it is not bringing freedom to the lives of people. And you might say, Bertie, why are you so radical about this? The reason why I will preach this radically is simply because it is the truth and because the other message is also preached very radically. And nobody complains about that. So we will preach this radically. And my brother, if this offends you, I'm very sorry for you because I don't want you to be offended. I want you to partake of this and listen to this. And if I'm going to mention some things and some examples that is, um, that, that, that's against what you believe, you know, um, please just bear with that and listen. Because the reason why I give those examples is that, so that nobody will be in darkness concerning any of these things. A wrong teaching on finances is bringing deception in the hearts of people concerning the character of God. Do you know that you as a person don't believe from a belief for stuff, but you believe in something? That's how God made us. We believe in something. We don't believe for stuff. We believe in someone. So if the someone that you believe in's character is twisted through wrong information about that person, how will you believe correctly and have peace of mind? You will never have peace of mind. And I want to just start off with, with some examples. You know, if I tell you, Listen, God loves you, God cares for you, He gave His Son for you, but when it comes to finances, He's not going to do anything for you, but you'll be part of the curse if you don't pay a full 10% to somebody who preaches to you. Do you know what your subconscious mind believes? It believes that money is more valuable to God than His own Son and you. Because he could give his son for free for you, but never money. And so many teachings says that the, 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 the tithing was before the law. And out of that perspective, a, a doctrine is preached that says, listen, because tithing was before the law, is not part of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ because Jesus only came to fulfill the law. So tithing was before that. But I've got good news for you. So was circumcision. It was before the law. And the slaughtering of animals as a sacrifice was before the law. But thank God it was all included in the law and then fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And may true freedom come to your heart when it comes to finances. May true freedom come to your heart when it comes to, 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 to this teaching. And the devilish doctrine of God cannot do anything for people that doesn't try and make others rich. You know, let me just read you a scripture in Timothy. You know, this was not planned, um, so it might take some minutes to find this. First Timothy, I think it's chapter 6. Listen to this, and, and just to give you the heart of the teachings of Paul, it's 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 4. It say, uh, 
uh, verse 3. It says, If any man teaches otherwise, and content not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doubting around about questions and strife of words, whereof comes envy, strife, railings, evil, surmissings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing, listen to this, that gain is godliness. From such withdraw yourself. Here Paul says, listen man, if people say gain is godliness, in other words, the more you have, the more is a sign that you are godly. But godliness with contentment is great gain. So be godly through the blood of Jesus Christ and be content with such things as you have. Now I don't hear many guys preach on that, but that is what the scripture teaches. For we brought nothing into this world and is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothes, let us be there with content. Now what about that scripture? Now listen to this. But they that want to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after money, in other words they wanted more, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man of God, flee from these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience and meekness. So, what he's saying here is that this thing of wanting more, wanting more, wanting more has caused people to err from true doctrine because they don't understand what God has given them and there's needs, you know, that must be met in ministries and those type of things and then because of that want, teachings and doctrines are preached that says... Stuff like, you know, this is the time of the Feast of Tabernacles and, and God is going to decide what He's going to do next year in this week now. And if you give your money now, God will make a good decision about your future. <laughs> That's not of God. It's not of God. It will never be of God. That type of doctrine was never born out of God. It is not of God. I don't know how to say it more clear. It is not pr promoting, it's not wholesome doctrine, it's not the doctrine according to godliness. Because that doctrine makes you a sinner. Because if you don't give as, as they say, then all of a sudden now you're a sinner. No, that is not the doctrine according to godliness. The doctrine that's according to godliness is saying that we are godly by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, what I want to just make clear to you here is, listen, the love of money, which he here is talking about thinking gain is godliness, is godly. The more you have, the more godly you are. And the sign of your godliness is in the car you drive, in the house you sit in, in how big your business is, how big your ministry is. That's now the sign of your godliness. Well, let me tell you something. Then Jesus would have been, or Paul the Apostle would have been the most ungodly man and preacher of all times. For he didn't have, he didn't even have people really sponsoring him in a good way. He worked and made tents and the church in Philippi gave to him twice. And that was it. And he was so blessed by that. He was in jail most of the time. He was poor. He said himself. He knew what it was to have and then he referred to the time when he was under the law and then now he's under grace. He knows what he's not to have. He was a very poor man. And let, let nobody tell you Jesus was the stinking rich guy that was just, that in today's time would be, you know, driving in a gold-plated jumbo jet. That's nonsense. Jesus Christ walked where he wanted to be and there was worldly people that had horses and chariots and all those type of things. Jesus didn't come with, with a horse with a, a gold-plated chariot and then he was riding on that and he had all of that for his disciples as well with 25 bodyguards. He didn't have all of that. 
So I don't say that we cannot be rich. I don't say that we cannot be very prosperous and millionaires and billionaires and all that. I don't say we cannot be that. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is twisting the truth of the scripture is wrong. Jesus wasn't rich. End of the story. Paul the Apostle wasn't rich. End of the story. Peter had two boats. Does that make you rich? In today's standard, having two boats. Listen, man, I know, very ma I know many fishermen that struggle and they've got two boats. Must pray for them that they get through every month. So don't say because, you know, it's like saying, you know, I've got two cars. That makes me a very stinking wealthy person for I had a car. Please, man. That is not the truth. And the thing is here that there was so many teaching concerning finances born out of a lust for stuff. And not out of a revelation of grace. First, man, listen. Before you study finances, be happy with what you have with no desire to have anything more. Then you go and study finances, and then you study it from the right perspective. Because anything else, if you've got a desire, I must have more, I must have more, your whole teaching, your whole doctrine concerning finances is flooded and infected with the lust for stuff. Now, um, you, you know, you, you might say I'm too radical about this. Well, I believe this is the truth. I believe this is the truth. And... And this is just God's way, you know, of, 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 let me put it this way. The way in finances that Jesus Christ brought was God's way unto prosperity. It was God setting you free from the lust of money. It doesn't help. We, we, in the world, before we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, before we believe upon Him, we've got a lust for everything. And now, once we receive Jesus our Savior, we find still a struggle with finances and we can't get rid of it because we must be rid of that lustful stuff because we must still care for our families, we must still buy a car, we must still have a house, we must still have all those type of things and cost money. And now all of a sudden, out of that lust and desire, and even this, it's an unhealthy desire for stuff, we go with that perspective trying to look for scriptures that can satisfy our lust. Then we come up with things like, you know, if you give to me right now, within the next five minutes, then God, I tell you, God, is going to bless you. <laughs> that is not of God. That is not of God, and that is not promoting holiness, is not promoting godliness, is not promoting the, the perspective that is preached by the Apostle uh, Paul here and, and written to Timothy that says... Having food and clothes, there would be content. Listen, if somebody comes to me and says to me, if you give me now $5,000, then God is going to bless you and you're going to have, you know what? A $10,000 plus healing. You know, you content me with that because I'm happy with what I've got. I was happy with what I had when I had nothing, and I'm happy with what I have right now, and I will always be happy with what I have. Amen. That's the way God has intended for us. This is what He says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. A lot of stuff, and wanting to have more, and then under the cloak of preaching the gospel, you know, just lusting off the stuff, man, that is not needed. That is, that is not promoting godliness. Now, let's get into... Um, let me just hear, hear how, how much time is there? Six minutes. Okay, um, yeah, so I, I just want to say this, and we've got six minutes to say this. Let's quickly go to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and then we're going to pick it up from there tomorrow in tomorrow's broadcast. So um, if you watch this live, know this that we're going to make a live broadcast 11 o'clock. South African time for half an hour on finances for a couple of days until I feel I've said what I want to say. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Listen to this. And verse 6. Oh, um, yes, it says, who, who also has made us able ministers, not of the New Testament... Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. But if the ministration of death, 
written and engraved on stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glorious, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For, for even um, that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excels. So what it's saying is that there is a glory that is much higher than the Old Testament glory. And if you can open your mind today and realize, and in the next session we're going to look at that, that tithing, sowing and reaping as well, and anything that you must do to get God to bless you, is part of the lesser glory um, ministry, which was actually called the ministration of death. And that there is a higher manifestation of glory that you can prosper more in than in the Old Testament way of glory or the, the former glory. And this promotes peace as well. And it's got nothing to do with your works. Under the law, we sat with something that says, by your works you enter in. And that system is then gone forevermore by the work of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the end of the law unto righteousness. And for me to stand as a righteous man before God in my finances is not by my works. And Jesus Christ was the end of my righteousness concerning being righteous before God in my finances forevermore and the same with you and this ministration is giving people freedom to really prosper and it promotes peace and not your works and it's more glorious than the Old Testament one you know what is wonderful about uh, uh, the, the glorious message of the gospel of Jesus Christ concerning finances it is not on the basis of works because you know when you've tithe and sow and reap and do all those type of things to be blessed, you must continue to do it because if you don't continue to do it all the time, that glory fades. The, 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 the moment you stop to give, your blessings stop to flow in because it's a fading glory. It fades all the time. But when you are in Christ, hallelujah, when you know by His riches, which is in His glory, by Christ Jesus your needs are met, do you know what then? It's an un fading, never-ending glory. Hallelujah. Bless God. Isn't that so, so, so good? That is the goodness of God. That is the love of God. Amen. Thank you that you've listened to this. You know, we're just going to um, go over to our regular broadcast now. So, and, you know, I forgot to tell my wife how to do that. You, do you know how to do Get your song in. She's got a song in. So we're going to listen to a song. And um, man, you're just going to enjoy this. Listen to this song. And while you listen to this, you can just find this, um, this peace coming into your heart concerning finances. And listen to this message again. If you've listened to the live broadcast, it will be in the archive within about a minute or two. Okay, thank you that you've listened and God bless you.